Thanks for stopping by guys and welcome back to Stormworks. Today we're going to be looking at a new creation. Now this is the XMBT Mark 2.2. Um, so one of the things I do want to say is part of the reason Stormworks videos have been scarce is because, well, I've been learning the game. Also, this is built in preparation for the weapons DLC that is supposed to be coming out sometime later this year. Not exactly sure when. Um, and as a result, the gun is non-functional, there's no weapons on it, and I don't really plan to be researching anything like weapons. I have just been mostly trying to learn things like drivetrain, suspension, stabilizers, and pretty much every other mechanic that you would expect to be needed for a tank. Now then, without any further ado, let's go ahead and hop into this vehicle. There's ladders all around the vehicle that you can easily get into. And, well, there's really not much to speak of on the outside other than here you have some filling ports for fuel. There are two fuel tanks on the front of the vehicle. They're split in half, so if you do, say, get damaged, there's a possibility you may actually be able to hold some of your fuel still. And they are separated. They won't uh, cross-contaminate, so if one gets punctured, the other one will still hold all of its fuel. So, simple hatch on the top. This is a one-man operated tank. Go ahead and hop in the seat. And all your controls are here, either W, A, S, and D, arrow keys, and a few buttons and switches. So one of the things that makes this, well, kind of an interesting vehicle for me, it is a completely diesel electric drive vehicle. So the actual tracks, right now we don't have the generator on, we can just drive it on the battery power. Now we'll be draining our battery quite rapidly. However, if we just go ahead and turn this generator throttle up, start the motor, we will start charging that battery. The motor is in no way connected to the wheels or any other part. It's solely connected straight from a motor to a generator. I can actually show that off. I have to get the gun online real quick, though. You will see the stabilizer snap into position. There we go. So if I rotate the turret off to the side, I can actually open up these hatches. There's the motor, there's the generator, and there is the electric motor. This electric motor is fed into some uh, gearboxes, which reduce the ratio. All right. Actually, I'm not sure if it'd be reducing or increasing the ratio. Basically, I'm transmitting the high torque of the electric motor into a higher speed. This means I can run the electric motor at a much lower um, power output, which makes it extremely efficient, but it's still more than enough to move this tank along at a decent speed. That, let me go ahead and actually just do this because it'd probably be easier to explain. Oh, wow, it's really hard to see this. Um, you know what? Let's just, uh, let's just cut it open. It is no easier to see. <laughs> um, so you have the electric motor there, which goes into gearboxes, which goes into two clutches. These clutches are for left and right. And that all is being controlled by a microcontroller. Yay. And that microcontroller controls the clutch brake system. Now, I did a clutch brake system rather than doing two engines because of just sheer efficiency. This entire system can run at full speed with only the single medium generator ran by a small engine. That right there is my power output. That's a tiny little thing. And I'm able to move this entire tank and charge the batteries and run all my electronics off of that generator without losing battery. All because this drivetrain is extremely efficient. Now, another reason that drivetrain is so complex is because, well, I wanted to be able to just drive it really easily, really normally. If I made something simpler, it'd still work, but maybe not as good. So what that means is as I'm driving forward, if I press right, 
it changes the clutch pressure. If I press left, it changes the clutch pressure as well. Now, if I let go of W, instead of changing clutch pressure, it uses brake because there is no, there's no engine speed. You can't use that extra throttle or the extra power from the motor to drive the tank left or right. You have to use the brake whenever the motor is not running. So that adds complexity. Plus, have it so the tank can tell when it's in reverse. And when it's in reverse, it actually swaps the controls. So I can drive this at full speed in reverse just by looking backwards. And it's right and left. There's no still the same going forwards or backwards. I still rotate the tank the same direction, regardless of which way the motor is running. So, that's talking about the drivetrain. Um, so, basically sum it up, it is a diesel electric, which speaking of which I need to turn on my generator. Because if not, I'm going to kill that battery. So it's a diesel electric drive. Um with a clutch brake system for steering. And the electric motor is actually driving the drivetrain, the actual wheels themselves, is geared down to a point that I'm able to run that electric motor at a very, very like low um, output. So I'm actually running the motor at I think 1 11th of the actual output that, motor, that electric motor is capable of, solely so I can get that efficiency to where I need it. If I wanted to, I could crank the speed of that motor up and this tank would go sideways so fast it's hard to control at those speeds, but I didn't need that speed and I need that efficiency, so I kind of traded those things off. Now, another thing you will notice and something a lot of people have been asking, why am I using wheels? Um, short answer, I used tracks for the longest time in a lot of my testing. Came to the conclusion that tracks are absolutely awful. Um, so from what I can tell, there's no major benefit to using tracks other than the aesthetic look of them. Uh, they have no suspension and well, they're extremely inefficient. So, um, I did design a track system that used suspension and was able to do that. It was complex. It was large. It was complicated. It wasn't worth it. And then the added problems of oh yeah, you need like three times the amount of engine power just to drive those tracks, made it completely not worth it for me. Especially when I was going for something like this small, this simplistic, I needed just a really efficient drivetrain, and wheels offered that for me. So I think that's everything really in the hull. There's really not much else to say about that. I think next we have to move into the turret. And for that, let's actually just set a waypoint just so I have somewhere to travel to while I talk. You will notice I am using a stabilized turret. This is achieved through the stabilized camera that is in the game. Um, so the original stabilizer I used for like the R3 and stuff was using sensors. So using a compass sensor and a... Uh, was it like a horizon sensor, basically? Um, while it worked, it had problems. So, after realizing they actually have a stabilized camera, I was messing around with it, and it... Let me go ahead and stop here for a second. Is really quite nice. So, let's say I want to look at the logo that's on the top of that building. So, not only will the gun stabilize as I like rotate and stuff, but it also has the ability to lock on. So if I hit that switch, now the laser knows that XYZ position of that object and it'll try and lock onto it at all times. So from the camera's perspective, it's a really nice stable picture, but you will notice the laser from the gun is bouncing quite a bit. If I'm moving straight like this, it's just fine. But if I hit terrain, you'll see it bouncing. Sometimes bouncing wildly even. And when I'm rotating, you'll see it get off track quite easily. So not a perfect solution. By no means, but the gun will get back on uh, back on target quite, well, relatively quickly. Um, 
And for the time being, I've been sp spending most of my time focusing on the drivetrain of this vehicle. So the stabilizer is still something I need to spend a lot of time working on. Now, a few things you may notice and some people have asked, why is the camera placed like that? Well, um, preferably I'd like the laser on the bottom of the camera, but if I turn the camera over, um, the stabilizer freaks out. So the game's built-in stabilization system does not like the camera in any other orientation. Um, I mean that as in not the way it's mounted. So I think this camera is meant to be mounted the other way around on top of something like, or on the bottom of something like a helicopter. But with this mounting, I fell off again. With this mounting system I'm using, the laser kind of defaults to the top, unfortunately. Um, this little shield here that you'll notice is not meant to protect the camera. It's meant to protect the rest of the tank. <laughs> because um, if the laser gets too close to the tank, the gun will just freak out like my old stabilizers would. Um, and using a gun shield basically to prevent the laser from pointing in certain directions is my best um, fix so far for that problem. Let's go ahead and keep driving. I'm actually going to turn off that uh, lock. Now, if I say block the camera and then pop the laser out, the gun will try and fix to it, which is nice. But there is one major issue. I cannot point into the sky. If I'm not pointing at an object directly, the um, system just doesn't... Like, the... Um, laser just doesn't track like at all so I do need to have some sort of backup aiming system whereas say scenario there's a tank on a hill and I'm trying to track that tank with the laser and I end up sending the laser into the sky until I can bring it back down the tank now if that laser is too far out of the view of the of the um, gun it just won't here you can actually see it's doing a rather decent job at finding the laser. Um, let's see. Can I get to the... There should be a uh, house. There it is. See if the gun will snap to that. And there you go. That would be a problem. Because now the gun is pointed into the sky. But my laser's pointed at target. And it's not tracking because I spent... I had my laser in the air for too long and it couldn't follow along. Now if I do something like this, tra trace, a uh, bleh, 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 trace it along the ground. Yes, my English just fucking died. Then it tracks properly. So that's an issue I want to figure out. Some way to track the um, stabilizer while the gun or while it's in the air in any way. I have a few ideas, but I still don't have a perfect one. Anyway. So there we go. So now if I stop, laser bounces around, and it's on target. I can move, stop, laser bounces around, it's on target. Um, I do have a PID controller set up, and that's I think that's like the biggest thing I really need to figure out is that PID controller. Um, but other than that, I think that's like the large majority of what I can talk about with this vehicle. There are a few other features and a few other things, one of which is if we go in here, you'll see I have my fuel meter as well as my battery meter, and this generator, you can just turn it down to like 30 so say you're trying to hide or just trying to like sit still for a bit you can leave the generator running so that way you ensure that your battery's charging and you're still running all your electronics but you can just run it at a very low speed and then whenever you need to get up and move you can still do so with the electric system we can just crank that right back up as soon as you need it now we're at 98 once the generator gets running at full speed It will start charging again. Oh yeah, one other thing. Um, I fucked that up, but <laughs> that's not a major issue. 
seeing as... Uh, is it a major issue? Why am I floating? Okay. Oh, the, the ground collision here is just janky, I guess. Um, so I punctured both of my fuel tanks, so that's a problem. I'm... Uh, one tank is either completely empty and or I destroyed that sensor. Probably destroyed the sensor. Um, the other tank is probably now full of water instead of fuel. Um, however, <laughs> what I was trying to demonstrate there was because it is a diesel electric drive, I can just drive this across the bottom of water using the battery power. So long as I'm able to get out of the water safely, it's not actually like a problem. It's really easy to do. At this point, I would turn on my generator, but I have a feeling I'd have no fuel. However, it does seem getting out of water is a little tricky. There we go. Are we still... Oh, yeah, we're hemorrhaging fuel. We're we are going to... Oh, what? Why is my fuel content going up and down? Why? Why? I'm confused. It's not how that sensor is supposed to work. Why is it going up and down? Um, anyway. Immediately crashes again. So, um, and, <laughs> and I've gotten the tank stuck. So I think I've really covered just about everything I really wanted to at this tank. Um, this is the second, like, main tank that I've built, so it is very early on, and I still have a lot of things I want to do and things I want to design. Um, the drivetrain, for the most part, I'm f completely happy with it, and it'll probably be the same drivetrain I'm going to be using from this point forward. Um... It's a relatively simple modular system. It's easy to control. It's easy to set up. The stabilizer is the only thing I really still have an issue with that I really need to spend some time improving. The one that I have now is technically functional, but it is nowhere near as good as I would like it to be. So... Um, unfortunately, I think that's really all the time I have left, and I think I've beached myself, and I'm not sure how much fuel I have left, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. If you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, if you have any suggestions, leave in the comments down below. If you enjoy the challenge or what I'm doing, please subscribe, it helps out a lot. And right now, shares help the channel the most, so if you do want to help the channel, share this, please share this episode with a friend. I do want to also thank Captain Bob for being a member over on the channel and supporting me in that way. So without any further ado... Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace.